Okay, what I want to do today is I want to introduce you to uh, to Nork. Nork is a gentleman that I've had a couple of conversations with. He he has a total different uh, style of, of trading or of investing. And I have basically tried to commit to you as my viewers that I'm going to try to bring to you every, every tool that I can to help you make good investment decisions. Now, I'm in a unique position. I, I'm, I'm basically here uh, to invest my money where I think it's going to grow the, the best and where I have a passion. I have a passion in biotech because of some things that have happened in my life, and that's what I enjoy um, reading about and educating myself on, and that's where I feel I have an advantage. And I think that is a, a critical part of anybody who is investing, you ha you're playing against professionals. So you have to gain an advantage any way you can. And then once you pick that niche and that vantage, advantage, then you have to study it and you have to go anywhere you can to build your toolbox so that you can be good at it. Nork has chosen uh, and is a trader. And uh, he's, he's going to tell us how long he's been doing it and what he's what it's all about and what his philosophy is. Let me introduce you to Nork. Welcome, Nork, to Best of Us Investors. Hey, Kerry, thanks for having me. Yeah. Tell us tell us about your philosophy. Well, first of all, tell me about your history. Well, I have been trading professionally since 2013, so I'm coming up on 10 years right now. And like a lot of, I would say, traders of my generation, I've come up on technical analysis. And so that is what I live and die by. So I, I eat what I kill. And I have been, uh, you know, I, I really got started back in cryptocurrency. Actually, before that was Forex and then cryptocurrency came about for me. Uh, now, mostly I work with stocks, index futures, but I also do cryptocurrency as well. Okay. And what, what tools do you use uh, in your day-to-day -day activity of investing? Well, the, the primary tool I would say I use is, of course, my platform, uh, whatever it may be. It's either the Thinkorswim platform uh, or TradingView. And that's because they have very good charting where you can have indicators and drawings. Now, I've gone through the whole gambit of technical analysis over the years, as I'm sure a lot of people that first get into technical analysis do. And I've come to a couple of you know, broad first principles, and one of which is, of course, the KISS. We all know what that means, keep it simple, stupid. And so the more that I've done technical analysis, actually, the less tools I actually use. So that's one thing that's kind of come about from all these years. Okay. That, that's interesting what you just said 10 years ago. What are you doing different now than you did eight years ago? Well, about eight years ago, I started really learning under a mentor, uh, the Ichimoku um, indicator set. And I went through a lot of different iterations of trying to understand it, trying to uh, predict the future. But slowly I began to realize and it really came to a head about three or four years ago. The reason people, I think, discount technical analysis is because they approach it in the wrong way. They believe that technical analysis is going to tell the future. That's not what it's about. Ultimately, the same reason that you, you look outside and you see clouds in the sky, you know, you may need to carry an umbrella you're seeking patterns. That's what we as humans do. And what looking at a chart can do is let your brain try to see these patterns that happen again and again. To me, a price chart is a visual representation of human emotion, fear, and greed. And just as we can begin to understand patterns in our significant other, patterns in our friends, patterns in you know, types of people, then we can also see this in charts, if you see enough of them, not always correct, but it happens with a high enough probability that you can make money. And that's my philosophy about technical analysis. So over the years, I've, I tried the whole 
attempting to tell the future with accuracy. And I think what people do is they use technical analysis in a certain way and they take a trade and it doesn't work. And they say, Oh, well, this is just astrology for men. I'm just, I'm I'm not going to try this. And, and, or they delete all the indicators and they put a whole new set back up on their screen and they try it again. And again, it doesn't tell the future. And so eventually they get to the point where it's like, oh, technical analysis is worthless. But you have to go through these iterations with an open mind until you discover what makes sense to you, what lets you kind of see a pattern that becomes useful in trading. And that's my philosophy. Okay. When you say see a pattern, uh, how many patterns might you have uh, that you're that you say, oh, this is an ABC and this is a DXQ. Uh, how many patterns might you be searching for, and how do you inventory that and recognize when you use this pattern as opposed to that one? Well, that's of course uh, the question, isn't it? I have a few tools in my toolbox. We'll put, I'll put it that way. That's the way I like to say. It. When I'm showing this to people trying to teach, uh, because I just, I, I teach not for classes or anything like that. I teach because I'm very passionate about trading. I love it. This is all I want to do. And I try to keep it as simple as possible. So I have a whole gambit of things, but I try to make sure to show people simple things. And if you permit me, I did have one thing that I wanted to show that's very approachable for people. Is that, is that good? Yeah. yeah. I know I, I come into this knowing that a lot of people may be dubious. You know, this is, like I said, that's what making the joke about the astrology for men, but that's why I wanted to, to show people something that's very, very clear. It doesn't involve a bunch of lines. In fact, if you look at any of the charts that I do, I try to remove everything else except for the thing that's going to show me something. So okay. want to see something cool. So I'm using trading view here to, uh, display this for y'all. And I'm going to look at a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to look at the things that people may trade. Your viewers may like to trade and talk about them a little bit. So what we're looking at right here is SLV. You may be familiar. That's the silver yeah. index ET or silver trust. That's the ETF. So let's, let's tell, let me tell a little story because everything's about, you know, there, there's a fundamental story behind everything, but let me tell you what happened and show you how people could have seen this on a technical standpoint. I have a lot of friends that are precious metal bugs. I have a lot of crypto friends as well. I, I try to talk to as many people as I can. And last year, a whole year ago in 2021, which was uh, right here, let's bring it up on the chart. I remember my friends sharing this story about how there was going to be a silver short squeeze. Now I know you've been trading for a while and I bet that you've heard that message yeah. sometimes as well. In fact, what I did, I actually put a video out, uh, to help my friend, anyone else showing how about every two years, the financial news media starts publishing these stories about how there's going to be a silver short squeeze. And it actually never works. Actually, I take that back out of the five times in the last two, 20 years that I've looked, it only happened one other time. So again, to me, not re that's not really technical analysis, but I already come to that thinking, okay, if I go back in history, there's only a 20% chance of this thing working. Okay. So let's go back to that day in particular. This was right before it happened. Uh, basically silver was on the run up through 2021 or excuse me, 2020, up from the, the COVID low back here, we're looking at a candlestick chart. So let, let me let me go into a little bit of quick fundamentals about what we're looking at here for people that don't actually uh, know what a candlestick chart is. Uh, these are Japanese candlesticks, and the solid part of the bar represents the open to the close. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to get into fancy candlestick patterns. Some people use them, I don't. But it's important to know that the high of the period that the candlestick is representing and the low are represented by these wicks. Mm -hmm. You good with that, Carrie? Yeah. I, okay. So far, are you I familiar? That. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Great. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. So you're pretty familiar with candlesticks, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Well, just for those that aren't, that's the important thing that we want to understand. So let's go forward one week into, I believe it was the last week of, uh, or actually the first week of February. Now, if we look back here on the chart to, uh, middle of August, 2020, the silver ETF, which remember was the whole story of the short squeeze. If you go back and look, people were saying, oh, they're manipulating the hedge funds or JP Morgan or whoever it is, is manipulating the silver ETF. There's not enough actual physical silver. Uh, if you, if you just buy SLB, you'll force them to come. Okay. That was the whole narrative. So that week, some people bought into it, obviously, and they pushed the price up here. They broke that high from August. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, this bar has a solid red body. Okay. That means it's a bearish bar. Right. And so you know that the open will be the beginning of this body and the close would be down here. So what did that close do relative to the August high? What did it do? It actually, it's, it's still a, a bit over it, isn't it? Or it closed right at it. Well, the high, let's zoom in a little bit more. So the high is up here. This is the high of the, yeah. So, okay. But so there's the high. Below. Yes, exactly. And so this, in spite of all the narratives out there that people were talking about, was a warning. It's a key, key warning. Because if you think about it, if this thing was going to go, more people needed to buy it. They needed to push it up, right? And that, that bar would be turquoise. Right. It would be yeah, green, turquoise, however, whatever you see, the lighter color. Yes, that would be what you want to see. At least you want the close of February to be higher than that August high or August close. That would be the ideal thing. See. And a lot of people might think this is not technical analysis, but it is because we're looking at price. We're looking at price relative to past prices in history. I'm, I have a lot of respect for the people like uh, Jesse Livermore, who uh, was a technical trader a hundred years ago in his own right. They didn't have computers. I don't even think he drew his charts, but he had this intuitive understanding of how price would move. But now we have the benefit of computers to show us. So remember how I said it was a warning sign? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully people listened because over the next few weeks, silver, the short squeeze failed. Wow. And even if, if we jump forward into today, we can see that that just never materialized and it's been a slow slog back down, yeah. but yeah. that was the warning sign. It was the failed breakout. And that's why I wanted to show uh, you and your viewers here. This is technical analysis to me, but it's one of the simplest things that you can look for to and the reason I'm sharing this is because I think this can save people a lot of money, even if they, uh, they like something, uh, they're in a position, this can make, help them avoid this kind of drawdown right here. Okay. So again, I want to show you a few more, but I'm... Or it can mm -hmm. confirm a, a <clears throat> probably a, a desire, or it can show you, wait a second, this doesn't look like, everything's not right. So let's find right. out some more, and then and let's watch it and see what happens. What kind of a move are we looking at there? Um as far as a uh, percentage, I can't see because our faces are over it. What was it up? Okay. There? So how much SLV broke the last high was about two and a half, 2.38%. Okay. okay. So that, that would be, a, I would say that is a good significant buffer that you could say, okay, if it broke, if it breaks it by a percent or two, and then it closes back below that high. That's another thing that I really try to focus on for my own patience, which is key in everything for investing and trading, is looking for the week, the day, the month, whatever time frame that you're analyzing to close. And so once that closes, you can make that evaluation. 
But from that high, um, that's about a 24% move down um, or over the course of a year. A year. Okay. Yeah. This is the SLV. Uh, what we're looking at where my, I'm highlighting is uh, the first week of February is exactly a year ago. Okay. Now, let's say that you had waited for that week to close. Okay. So your percentage movement, you would have had to be patient through about yeah. June. But from that point forward, you'd have a minus 16% movement in the SLV from so you, that you confirmation. Would have, you, you would have shorted it at that point. That you could have, yes. Mm -hmm. You could have, if that was your game. Okay. Or for those that, and really why I pointed this out to people at the time was those of my, which I consider to be friends. I just want to help. I'm not trying to keep people from making money. I'm trying to help people save it. And I, I tried to give them the warning and say, Hey, look, this thing failed to break out. I know that you believe this fundamental narrative, but the price is telling me something different because I really think over these years, that was just a story that they told retail traders to get them to buy the silver up to that point so they can make yank it down. But that's my own story. That's my own conspiracy theory. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So I let let's use me as an example. I come mm -hmm. to your your uh, your broadcast on on Wednesday. How long does it take me uh, with your with your tutorship here uh, to get comfortable with this? I you think experience with your friends and whatever. Well, I've never, I've never done structured classes uh, because I'll be honest with you. I don't like a lot of the trading education uh, that is out there. The technical analysis education. It is too easy to dazzle people with lines and past bias and then sell courses. I really don't want to be that person. I just love trading. This is all I want to do. And I like sharing my love with people. And so what I would say to people is you really need to practice like anything. You just have to keep looking at charts, doing your homework. I mean, 10 years of work for me this last week in a particular trade came down to four minutes on Amazon earnings actually. And so it, it's hard for me to really put all this, all the reasons and stuff that came together, but just the experience, the measurements, it all came together uh, for a single moment for me. So um, okay. I could talk about that, but that's, that was a very interesting thing to happen, but it's outside the scope of what I wanted to show about yeah, false. Yeah. Here, so. Okay. so what I can expect if I come to your um, broadcast a uh, week from Wednesday, um, will be whatever is top of mind for you as a trader at that time. And you'll kind of share with us what your thoughts are and how you use trading views to confirm or deny your hypothesis. Well, I'm going to uh, go through and uh, we'll use this example. And what I'll try to do is I'm going to try to focus on one concept at a time. Okay. So I have actually, I prepared uh, some other examples of this to kind of really, to really hit home okay. uh, with Bitcoin and a stock, which is actually a mistake of mine, because that's how we learn, yeah. making mistakes. And so I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll save those examples for uh, that broadcast. And so what I really want to do is I want to um, focus on one concept and I did actually come from, you know, teaching people. And so I do like to have like a interaction. Um, I do enjoy teaching. I feel like if someone is not getting the material, uh, it's me as a teacher. It's not because this, the person is not intelligent or right. anything like that. As a teacher, I see it as my responsibility to explain it a different way. So it does reach them. So how long does it take them? I know that's, I'm not answering your question, but directly to answer your question, how long does it take someone? It depends. It, it really depends on the level of commitment people have to, to studying these patterns. And you really actually need years. I, I got to be honest with you. I think a lot of people want to come into technical or any kind of money making thing and they want to do it quickly. Yeah. But, you know, notice I'm talking about something from a year ago. 
Um, I have, and, and, and the reason I was able to identify this was because of, you know, over the 10 years, I remember there have been these silver short squeeze yeah. stories that failed. And so that's, that's, that really is the answer. It, it takes years of experience, like any profession, any industry, you, you basically just develop this, this base of knowledge and you just go forward and you just keep refining it. All right. I think this is this is excellent. I, I think I don't I don't know that anybody else does this sort of um, sharing of knowledge uh, and and how to because that like you said um, if you're going to be successful in this you've got to put forth the effort you've got to put forth the time and you have to dedicate yourself to learn it. You have just so I I've been a user of trading views for probably two years now, I don't know this. Um, and so I'll be there watching your video with everybody else because I think I think you, you are offering uh, our viewers something that that they can't get anywhere else. All right, well, thank you. now you're also gonna participate on our Discord as I understand it. So- I, I am, and the thing about, yes, yes. But the thing about Discord is eventually you end up being invited to a lot of Discords, but you're going to get, of course, my special thing. I have my Discord that I have to manage, but, uh, and then I have yours and then I have my friends and all want to do it as well. So eventually it's, it's such a great platform, but everyone can make a Discord. So everyone has so many, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to answer questions on there for sure. Okay. Excellent. Um, all right. I think that's, uh, I, I, I'm so excited that we're building a team of people that are going to give you, give the viewers a almost a smorgasbord. What is what is it you want to do? How much time do you want to put into it? How much effort do you want to put into it? Here's a guy who's been at it for ten years, and he's willing to open his his mind. And and I like what you said. You won't get it right every time. But you'll learn and you'll know why you got it wrong when you're done. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now in the in the um, the description there is a link uh, where viewers can um, sign up and get the uh, trading views. What level uh, is this? Are you aware or do you know? Oh, on mine. So. <laughs> That's a good question. I have the full blown pro version mm -hmm. and there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, number one, uh, I, I have a lot of, usually put on a lot of indicators. Okay. Now I don't always, you notice on this one, I'm explaining a concept. I take them all off, yeah. but I go through my different iterations. I sometimes I try new things. That's one reason. And, and so the, the free version, you can look at a chart, you can have a certain number of indicators, but you're limited. So that's how they, no, they want you to have one. You can also have multiple profiles, which in my case, I have, as you see, a lot of different profiles and that saves all your different chart patterns and indicators and things like that. Then finally, with the pro version, you have an alert system and where you can set alerts either by, you know, setting an alert on the chart, like for instance, adding an alert at a certain level, or you can have indicators be able to set you alerts as well. And I use TradingView for my alert system. I have a certain indicator that's kind of based on this concept that I programmed to go hook into my Discord and fire off an alert when something happens. Okay. And uh, you have to have the pro version for that. And a lot of people, they look at you know the cost of it and they're like, oh, I just want the free version. I think that's silly. I do too. You, you get what you pay for. It is entirely worth it for me. I, it's, it's, it's silly for me to even, it's a business expense for me. Absolutely. And I couldn't live without it. And, and I don't, I get, I get paid like little fake uh, tokens on this thing to say it that I can't spend on anything. So it doesn't matter to me. I, I love it. It's, it's one of the best things out there. Okay. I, I'm looking forward to learning from you. Um, this is Nork. And uh, he's uh, Norrock. It's, it's yeah. Norrock. Yes, Norrock. Yes. Okay. It, All right. I, it's my I, gamer I, name. I, I just had a vision of Ben Johnson. Norrock. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's not a bad deal. Uh, okay. 
Um, NORROC will be with us uh, on Wednesdays, and um, let's learn from him. But I would, again, hear what he's saying. You need tools in your toolbox um, to, yeah. to, to be successful at anything, whether you're a doctor, a dentist, a carpenter, a plumber, or a trader. You need tools. Okay, that was Norrock. I'm going to call him Rock. He's our own Dwayne Johnson of um, of trading, and I think he's going to teach us a lot. This is the direction I want to take this channel. I want it to be your everything store for financial. I'm going to, I have added Trent, who's more of a macro investor. He's my son. Jake up on Monday is is deep into researching small tech companies and deep into researching. Um, he's also an author for Seeking Alpha. Uh, he's on Monday. On Tuesday, I'm going to have a presenter on cryptocurrency. I'm interviewing him this afternoon, and we're going to set up his work. Then The Rock, Norrock, is going to be about trading. And I think this is a phenomenal addition because I'm one of an investor. I don't concern myself about daily movements the rock does. And I think that's going to teach you a dimension that is going to be fantastic for you. Mark is more of a value investor. He doesn't invest in companies that don't make money. That's not part of my criteria. So what I want to do is give you the knowledge you need to, first of all, make good investment decisions, whatever your style is, whatever your needs are. And then also, I'm going to find us a CPA that is going to be a presenter so that they can teach us how to keep more of what we make by understanding our tax code. And then ultimately, I'm going to find you a financial advisor who can basically help you create wealth so that you can make a difference in the lives of the people who follow you. That's what this channel's all about. That's where I want to take it. If you want to be a part of it, I suggest you join our tribe, and that involves going to bestofusinvestors.com and uh, giving me, me your name and your email address. And then from that point, I'm going to then invite all of these people. No, I'm going to incentivize these people to come to the Discord to answer your questions, to broaden your perspective. Right now, that's going to cost you $10 a month. I'm going to compensate these people. You're going to take their knowledge and make yourself better. We're going to expand upon that. I highly recommend that you put the right tools in your box, and that is right now, certainly tradingviews.com, certainly Seeking Alpha, and certainly Stock Cards. They all have a link and a discount, and these are the tools we're going to be using in our presentations as well as in the Discord to help us make better investment decisions. So that's what my commitment is to you, is to make you a better investment investor. I'm then going to continue to gather presenters, and what I want to do is build your everything financial store, not store, YouTube channel. Be talking to you more about this over the coming days.